on this episode of Pimp My Gun, we will not be using the mag of holding because we'll be trying out the new aftermarket part, the Jack Slash, which is an underbarrel attachment that doubles as a combat knife. Let's go test it out. So this has to be one of the more underwhelming aftermarket parts that we're going to be getting this season. Even so underwhelming that you can't even see it on my gun until it moves the inspect to this side. But because it is an attachment that can be placed on multiple weapons, I went ahead and brought in two guns here so we can do a little bit more of a thorough test. My reason for bringing in two different weapons here is I have the Fennec, which is one of the fastest movement speed weapons in the game. And I also put a muzzle on this that increases the damage amount on this weapon. And it looks like when I'm meleeing with it, it literally just pulls the underbarrel right off of the weapon. So I just have a knife. That's it. Is this the whole aftermarket part? I really hope not. I was expecting this to be like a whole gun butt with it, but it does look like you actually fully remove the underbarrel attachment and melee with it. Because as you can see, my lethal, I have a Molotov. I made sure not to bring in a throwing knife because normally when you have a throwing knife, that just becomes whatever you melee with. And we're just straight up using the Jack Cutthroat. What if I bring out the FJX? Is it the same thing? It is. What if I drop one of my weapons and I just have my fists out? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to punch with my fists. I don't know what I was thinking. But what if I buy a gun off the wall and I go to melee with this? This obviously doesn't have the jack cutthroat on it. And it is going to gun butt. So that's weird. Definitely very weird. But as we've been seeing against these tier one zombies... Sometimes it's been one-shotting. Other times it hasn't. I don't know what happened there. It's like a one-shot headshot somehow, but the melee like drags it down to the, the middle of their chest. I I'm very confused right now, but we're going to go test this in tier two. All right, we got some tier two zombies here. How's it doing? Looking like it's going to take more than just a few swings to kill these guys. I was hoping this is going to have way more melee damage than just a normal throwing knife. It did one-shot the Hellhound. I got a critical kill on him. Oh, but it's not looking like this is going to be very good. But this is with our FJX. Maybe we need to bring out the one that has the higher melee damage muzzle. Okay, I, this is not doing anything. I'm actually going to molly these guys so I can get an Aether Shroud because we still have to go test this in tier three. I already know it's not going to do a whole lot, but we got to do it. And why is the molly not killing? Hello? Does this thing just nerf damage in general? None of these zombies even have that much damage to them. That's insane. All right, and we're going down. Awesome. Am I going to have to actually shoot these zombies? I'm going to do a side quest real quick so I can get enough money to afford a self-revive so we don't immediately lose this game in tier three, testing it out. If I can find the contract, there it is. So while we're taking out this mimic like an insurance claim, this underbill aftermarket part doesn't only work as a knife. It actually does improve your movement speed, your sprint to fire speed, I'm pretty sure, and vertical recoil at the cost of hip fire spread. I think. I don't know. It doesn't seem like that terrible of an actual underbarrel attachment, but the melee damage on it isn't looking very good at all. See you later, Mimic. Please give me a self revive. Thank you. Now we can go to tier three. Okay, I'm going to throw on these golden armor plates and quick revive and stamina up for my own safety before we go into this. I'm going to throw a decoy. Please go to it, zombies. And let's see how we're doing against these guys literally doing nothing we're, we're doing absolutely nothing i need to aether shroud and i need to leave before things get serious what about what about against this hellhound nothing cool all right i'll be seeing my way out of here then oh they are not giving up on chasing me all right well we've seen how these things do unpack a punched and unupgraded let's go ahead and pack a punch and upgrade them get these both to pack three and get them to legendary oh there's a new event going on i didn't even see that and it looks like the damage is staying the same. Awesome. Yep. Where's uh, Melee Macchiato when we need it? It's coming in a whole game late. And now I don't even have a gun. Oh, there it is. Cool. Now, I haven't given up hope on this yet. Maybe it's just really bad against normal zombies. Maybe against a uh, tier 2 HVT will do decent. This could just be a boss killer, you know? This is like uh, driving a wooden stake into a, a vampire's heart. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's like using a, a plastic sword against somebody in full armor. Oh, shit. There's got to be some way we can make this work. Like, why is it so bad? Let, let's switch to our, our vector here. Maybe this will do a bit more. No. It, it's not. It's not doing anything. This is ridiculous, dude. I feel like it does nerf my lethal damage, too. Why is why do Molotovs not do anything anymore? And I hate to admit this, but I did lie to you guys earlier. I said we're not using the Maggle holding. Guess what? I'm throwing it on. And Deadwire Detonators. 
Something's got to help here. I think we might just have to switch gears here mid-episode. All right, let's do this. On this episode of Pimp My Gun, we'll be trying out the MAGA holding on the, the Vector with the two-tap mod attachment for the magazine or whatever it's called. And this converts it from being fully automatic to only shooting two bullets at a time. So uh, let's see if this is any good on top of us using the Jack Slash. Oh yeah, this is definitely doing way more. You know what? Let's get them low and then we'll have the Jack Slash take them out. If it's even possible. Come on. Look how little damage we're doing. Stop. Stop healing. There you go. All right, whatever. We have to get them down to literally a uh, nut hair of health if we want to kill them with it. Oh. We got two nut hairs. I'm going to interrupt this video for a second because while I was editing this, I noticed every time I went to melee with the Jack Slash, if I look down in the bottom right where all the weapon information is, it would go from gold to gray. So it seemed like none of the Pack-A-Punch or the weapon upgrades went towards the Jack Slash at all. Now, this isn't anything groundbreaking and I don't know if it's a bug, but let's get back to whatever the hell I was talking about. Hell no, I'm not reviving you, Jeff Epstein. You got to be kidding me. But I kind of figured going into this that this aftermarket part wasn't going gonna be the greatest but i didn't think it was gonna be this bad like i had the thought that this was gonna be the ugly duckling out of all of the underbarrel aftermarket part attachments we've gotten like the jack limb ripper is so much better than this and even you know post nerf jack purifier is so much better than this but literally doing no damage like it don't scale with pack a punch at all we couldn't kill a single thing like we could get in a 1v1 with a zombie and it would probably win actually let's try this I'm going to throw a dead wire on here since this thing's weak to dead wire and you can't even see the damage happening to it. Maybe because he's healing. Let's stop him from healing. Knock that off. That's bad. Bad behavior. Bad sport. And let's hit him now. I mean, you can see the, the little yellow line pop up on his health bar, but it's basically doing nothing. So we're just going to have to take him out with uh, the classic bullet method. That's so ridiculous. I, I got one more thing I think that might save this. Maybe because I have a Molotov, it's taking Molotov like melee damage, even though that's not a thing. So if I go and find a throwing knife in melee with it, not only can we see what one takes priority over your melee, but we can see if it maybe doubles the damage. I never thought I'd be wandering around in like tier two looking for a throwing knife, but here we are. There's one. There we go. Uh, let's stow that so that we can swap it with our Molotov. Now, when we knife, it still looks like we're holding the jack cut throw. Now, where's a zombie we can try this out on? Here we go. Are we doing more damage now? Um, maybe actually. Yeah. Hold on. Let's swap it. So we got him to like half health. Uh, we should probably count our swings. Let's try this again. Let's just kill this guy. Get him out of here. Scram. We'll, we'll kill all of them actually. So we can get a, a fresh base. So we have these two here. Let's try to separate them. Real quick decoy and we'll give them three swings each so this is one two three that's how much damage we're doing with the throwing knife equipped and we switch to this throw another decoy one two three about the same damage it doesn't look like it changes a whole lot but they do have armor maybe armor's the issue maybe it'll be easier to see in tier one all right let's try this again i'm gonna do one swing here in tier one there's one swing Almost all their health. That's with the Molly equipped. Now let's go find you a friend. Here we go. They just spawned in. That's one swing. Is that the same damage? Yeah, I don't think it changes a whole lot. That's lame. All right, now what if I drop my gun again and I do one jack slash melee on this guy and then we do a throwing knife melee on this guy? They are the same damage. They do the same thing. Awesome. What, what a great use of aftermarket part. I don't know if this thing was even intended to be used in zombies. I, I feel like they knew people would bring it in here and test it out. This is bad. This is real bad. Okay, let's let's do another test. So here's the Jack Slash. Did a whole lot of nothing. Swap that out for this. Does the gun butt do more? I think it might have. Or is it the same damage? No, oh, I think the Jack Slash actually did slightly more. Look, it, it won in a category. It actually did better in a test. I think there's one more thing that we can try. Maybe Deadshot will make a difference. So he'll get a little damage boost from it. Is it? Is it doing anything? Nope. Cool. This is absolutely ridiculous for an aftermarket part. Look at this. The zombie took probably 45 of my slashes to hit me once. And I even get him close to half health. Look at that. 
That's ridiculous. Oh, look at that. We got Spinal Husk. At least we got something done this game. We're doing something with the Fennec. Well, we can't let all these acquisitions we brought in go to waste. Let's uh, try to knock out some tier three contracts and uh, I guess test out this Fennec a bit more. And I guess we got some BO6 Zombies news we can talk about because a little teaser came out for the Terminus map. And in it, we got to see what uh, some of the crew from Rec Room have been up to in the last five years. And it looks like it's been a whole lot of sitting in a cell. We're gonna have Weaver there. We're gonna have Schizophrenic Strauss is what everyone's been calling him. Because Dr. Strauss has just gotten like his long ass hair now and a long beard and he just looks like he's done with it we also got dr gray in there it'll be cool to see her as a playable character because we only really saw her through comms i guess same thing with like weaver and and strauss but i feel like dr gray was more of a notable character especially with like this game's lore implications on her how she's like ava jensen's mom along with rabinoff and maxis they, they had a, a nice polycule going on and they did basically reveal that rick toffin's looking like he's gonna be the main antagonist for the next game which is sweet. I feel like that's going to be a lot of fun since they revealed he was the director of Requiem. And from everything that I've been able to put together, and by me, I mean reading tweets, it looks like he's just really trying to get his revenge on Weaver for accidentally killing his family, or maybe he did it on purpose. I don't know. Weaver's kind of a nut. So that was his whole plan with like getting, you know, the Forsaken taken away and everything, and then arresting all of Requiem at the end of it. Also almost forgot Carver's there too. Looking buff as fuck. He's going to be fun as hell to play as, but the reason why I, i'm you know slipping my memory here I, i'm all all twisted all discombobulated is that we got to see peck again and he's the one that is like breaking them out of jail i didn't want to believe it people have been telling me for a long time that peck is gonna be a good guy or whatever yeah right i i still feel like you know he's he's got that look in his one eye that he's up to something dastardly he's out for uh his own self like yeah he let uh requiem out of prison but he's got to benefit from it somehow and he also brought along someone named maya who's looking for their brother and i don't know if i'm just dumb actually i do know i am dumb but i think they're a new character they have to be at least like we don't know who their brother is or i just completely missed it so it'd be cool to see them try to find them and then also if we're gonna get brutus on that map because that whole like intro cutscene started out with them like slashing the throat of uh the the guard there watching over them the guy that's been like interrogating them for the last five years and torturing them and so people are already starting to theorize that he's gonna get like you know reanimated into brutus or they're gonna re like release brutus on them after they like escape out of their cells but overall i'm like loving the atmosphere i'm loving like the story build up for it, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun in bo6 and then also i mentioned earlier the melee macchiato that could be helping us out a lot the new perk coming in with bo6 but it looks like that new perk is gonna be boosting melee damage at least i hope so with that kind of name and from what i've been theorizing from what i've been seeing other people talk about is that maybe they might be getting rid of the cold war upgrade system oh wait hold on pause for a second we have insta kill we can actually do something with this in tier three holy shit this is how it's supposed to be working okay let's actually kill him before we get too ahead of ourselves but with the introduction of melee macchiato i've been thinking that we're probably not going to be getting the same upgrade system in cold war like we saw with um using the ethereum crystals to upgrade your uh different abilities or, or stats like you could upgrade your melee in cold war and just have a bowie knife on you all the time and that would basically one shot up until like round eight or something like that I, I don't quite remember it's been a little bit and i really did like the upgrade system i just wish that there was an ability to turn it on and off if you wanted to give yourself more of a challenge or you know play without it for a bit and doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be getting rid of that upgrade system that's just what i've been thinking and i i would be a little upset if they did get rid of it if they didn't replace it with something else because i did like the you know the more of a grind to it outside of like the camos and you know figuring out the maps and everything i, I like that there was something else to work towards to grind towards but that's all the stuff that's been like officially out and like what i've been theorizing on it what has potentially leaked outside of the entire multiplayer beta already and everything going on with that but from what's coming out today is that people are saying we might have the ability to save and quit out of zombies games now, I know it's probably going to be like some people are going to be angry about that. You know, people are going to be like, oh, now high rounds don't count because you can just save and quit and do the same game of zombies for two years and you can get to round 8,000. But personally, I'm a big fan of the save and quit feature, especially if I'm going for a high round because that's what really deterred me from going for a lot of high rounds because it gets pretty you know repetitive after a while and it takes a lot of time. It does take a lot of skill in you know most games. People probably won't say that about Cold War, but 
it still takes a long time to get up to a high round like that. And I feel like a lot more people would go for high rounds if there was a way to, you know, walk away from the console without just like leaving it on for however long you want to take a break from the game. Now, I'm sure there's going to be still issues with the save and quit thing. Like there's going to be an update that goes out and you'll like lose your zombie save. People are going to be mad about that. I can already tell it's going to be a big issue, but I think it's a nice quality of life change. Not everybody has the, the 14 hours in a day that they can spend to, you know, try to get to round 70 in like BO3 or whatever. And even in Cold War, it takes like roughly an hour, maybe like an hour and a half to get to round 100 and a lot more if you're trying to go any higher. And I just think it makes going for high rounds a lot more fun and a bit more accessible. Like it's still going to take the skill to get there, but you can just pace yourself out. What I really hope is that if we see like confirmation of the rampage inducer coming back and if that is going to be able to be used past like health cap because i love that they increased the rampage inducer in cold war going from like rounds like 1 to 20 where it goes a lot faster and the zombies are all super sprinters and all that the main thing i really liked about it was that like the time in between rounds was way faster because once you're already set up you don't really need that whole like 45 seconds to a minute in between rounds like it's nice to have a little downtime every now and then but when you're trying to get to a high round that, that adds up a bit. Oh, we got Molten Obsidian on our FJX. What the hell? But them increasing it up to round 55 was nice. I would just like to see it be infinite. I think that would make high rounding way more enjoyable, way like pal more palatable and just save everybody involved some time. And while we're still speculating on some new things, they put out like a mini trailer of it looked like zombies walking and then something like stomping on the zombies this was pointed out to me by the boy house shout out house and he theorized that it might be orda i think it'd be sweet to have orda come back especially like on a map where peck is involved you'd be like oh shit this guy followed me from firebase but i think Orda's probably long gone uh, we, you know we took him out at the end of firebase maybe it's gonna be something similar like an, another big creature another big zombie but either way no matter what it is i'm gonna kick its ass i don't matter i i would just like to have another big enemy like that but they did confirm, or at least like some leaks have confirmed that we are getting abominations back. I don't know if they're going to be of the uh, mega variety or if they're just going to be like abominations like we saw in Forsaken. And we're also getting manglers back. And I saw a few people weren't too happy about it. And I get it. You know, we're, we've been getting these things for the last few years, especially manglers. It feels like they've been in like every zombies game since. I guess Cold War in this, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like we, we want some new enemy types. Some different kinds of zombies and we will be getting that there was a list of like the names of the different enemies that we're going to be getting and we did see like a little preview of some like spider looking thing something that's crawling on the ground with like uh almost like a nova crawler looking face or uh what the little thing is hanging off the abominations faces look like but either way i just like I, I can't contain my excitement for bo6 i i cannot wait for that to come out like i i remember back in cold war when that was coming to an end where like Vanguard's about to come out and you know I still was a little optimistic about Vanguard and just like the dread that I felt knowing I had to wait four years for the next Treyarch game and we're already almost there like it's been a long time but we're, we're right there we're right at the finish line I hope that we can see some zombie stuff in the beta we'll definitely be seeing it COD next and within the next few days I think we're getting a zombie gameplay trailer which is going to be cool but everything that I'm seeing coming out like multiplayer zombies just everything about Z bo 6 looks so good right now. And we're just so close yet so far away from it. We're going to get a little taste with the beta. A little taste of uh, seeing some people play it at COD next. But we're still going to have to wait till October. And as for our Fennec here, uh, I wasn't really coming into this expecting to review it. So this is kind of a, a half-assed review. The, the Jack Slash kind of, you know slashed a hole in our plans but with this double tap mod on it that you guys reminded me about after our last pimp my gun video where we're using the single tap mod oh it looks pretty decent damage wise like we're taking zombies out at a fast rate but i don't have a whole lot of ammo like you can see we're already under 100 bullets i think it has a max amount of ammo of like 250 which is extremely low for an smg i don't feel like it should have that little ammo especially just switching from full auto to two tap i think i might switch out the ammo type as well but i think the normal fennec is probably better it still is a fun way to use it though we got the storm on its way we have time to do one more bounty here in tier three and then we can make our way into the dark aether and see if we can come out of this game with any decent loot i just want to be able to recoup a little bit of what we brought in here just a slight amount you know maybe like one legendary aether tool i'll be fine with that 
a Maggle holding, perhaps? Because we got scammed with this Jack Slash. This thing is busted and not in a good way. It does absolutely zero damage. Let's just, for one for one time, for the one time. Look at that, still nothing. And the storm is almost here. Can we kill him before he gets here? Perfect. Beautiful, he's not gonna regain his health. And let's just make like a tree and head to the Dark Aether. Let's just go ahead and speed run this so we can get out of here. Sorry, Abomination. I gotta take this out on you. You didn't make this aftermarket part. I can't blame you, but I can kill you. Or at least I'll try and I will succeed. I am not going out like a bitch. Oh, we almost had him there too. The FJX is fucking crazy, dude. Oh, until it runs out of ammo. Not so crazy then. Oh, 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 let me in. Okay, all right, maybe we will die. But the Jack Slash is gonna win this. It's gonna get the last laugh. No, it's not, let's move. Let's stop fucking around. I've already gone down twice. I don't even have that many self revives, I don't think. But yeah, I got one more left. I got one more in me. There we go. You got one for me in here? Yes, sir. And a Maggle holding. Love to see it. Does it still not do anything in the Dark Aether? Yeah. I don't know why I thought it would change in here. Let's just knock out this Outlast. There we go. There's our Outlast. Zombies, go ahead and despawn for me. Thank you. And another Maggle holding. Love to see it. One last contract. This has got to be the one that has my legendary Aether tool in it. So let's get to overloading these bad boys. A little Aether Shroud. Got to stick it. Don't kill me, please. I'm just a boy. And a Cashmere for the last one. Oh, it bounced off a zombie. Awesome. That's... I guess it's still working. Whatever. We ball. Now, what do we get for that? Another mag of holding. They gave us three mags of holding. Okay, I guess I accept your apology game. Still would have rather had the aftermarket part work. I guess they weren't trying to have a whole nother super op underbarrel attachment watch this thing be a menace in like multiplayer or war zone though because for whatever reason a weapon will just be terrible in zombies but good in other modes or it'll be bad in other modes and good in zombies it's just not good across the board but let's get out of here before the game decides it wants to crash too just to add insult to injury so overall thoughts on the jack slash it's ass. I, I don't know what else to say about it. I feel like it might be bugged because I it should not do less damage than literally everything else. Like just using a normal throwing knife and meleeing with that will do more or at least the same amount. It seems like a pretty useless aftermarket part. I mean, it, unless you want like that slight boost to your movement speed, but there's probably some attachments out there that boost your movement speed more or at least underbarrel attachments that boost it more than this jack slash. It's a fun idea. It's a cool concept. I like what they're trying with a lot of these aftermarket parts, but I'm glad we're getting this one out of the way because I think we have a lot more exciting ones coming in this season. Anyway, sorry to disappoint if you thought this was going to be good, but I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate our love and support and I will see you in the next one. Later.